So this is my light propagation volumes implementation. Um, it's the technique used by Cryengine 3 to simulate indirect light. Indirect light means light that's not transmitted directly from a light source onto an object, but indirect over a reflection from another object. So what this does, for example, you see the light coming down on the left and on the right, um, the wall also gets brighter because the light gets reflected from the left wall onto the right wall and that's called indirect illumination. Another effect this has is called light bleeding. That is if you um, if light falls onto a colored material, for example those curtains here, it gets colored, um, the reflected light gets colored in the color of the material so the light that gets reflected by that red curtain gets red and then colors this arc arches here red. Same for blue and green. You also can see this very good on the floor. Those curtains here are have the same colors and on the floor you see this reddish bluish colors. I cannot turn off the textures so you can see it better. Now when, when it falls onto those curtains you see the floor gets blue here and red here and green here. And basically this adds a lot of realism to the scene because in um, reality it's also that way. It's just a little bit exaggerated here so you can see it better but basically it adds realism. So if I turn this off and turn it back on um, you can see the difference with and without it and with it it looks more realistic at least in my opinion. For example you also can see it here on the wall. The wall gets brighter as the sun falls on the floor and when the sun vanishes on the floor the wall gets darker again. One problem this technique has it um, does everything volumes and uh, if the voxels are too big the light propagates through those thin walls and that's a problem that's why it's so right here and that problem I was never really able to fix. So how does this work? You basically render the scene out of the perspective of the camera, uh, the light. Same as what you would do for shadow map, you just add in additional information, the color and the normal. And of course the depth map we see here. Then you go into the scene and every pixel that the sun sees you add in a virtual point light. That's the red dots you are see now here. Every red dot is a virtual point light so for every at the position of every red dot there's uh, added a new light source. For this scene I'm using approximately 200,000 light sources. That's possible with this technique. It wouldn't be possible with something like deferred shading because that supports only like up to 1000 light sources and that's not enough for this kind of um, algorithm. Then you divide the scene into those blue cubes and compute the light propagation within those cubes. I can show that to you. So first you add in the initial light information. Um, that's the you see that's initial light that was created from those small light sources. Where the red curtain is there's of course red light, green light and so on. And then you compute how this light propagates through the scene. So you see it propagates. Um, of course you have to include occlusion. The occlusion is usually computed out of the um, depth buffer of the light source and the camera. And then when you're done with all the propagation steps you add together the results and get the final volume as you can see here. Um, there's red light where the red curtain is, green and so on. And um, when you're done with that as a final step you read out of the volume and light the final scene with it. That's why I'm getting these results here. Yeah and I myself think that looks pretty cool. Um, and another cool thing is this even works on the consoles. 
this algorithm is so efficient that you can do it on the PlayStation 3 and on the Xbox. It's not PC only. So you're going to see this in Crisis 2. <laughs> 